Hey, if you're still struggling with gas, bloating, diarrhea, or constipation, you're gonna wanna hear me talk about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth today because you might have good bugs growing in all the wrong places. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Jordan Reasoner, and welcome to this week's episode of SC Lifestyle TV, where each week we give you one simple actionable step that you can use towards better digestion. And today we're talking about good bugs growing in the wrong places. I want to talk to you about SIBO, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, if you have this, you know what it is, and if you've never heard of it, you probably think I'm a little crazy. But here's the deal in your small intestine, you should have relatively few bacteria growing. Now, there are some but not many. And if you get good bacteria or bad bacteria, but generally any bacteria of any kind overgrowing in the small intestine, that's a really bad thing, okay? It can cause things like severe gas, bloating, distended stomach, malabsorption of nutrients, diarrhea, constipation, those types of things. Okay, but it can also cause anxiety, depression, brain fog, things that you experience in your brain. Now today we're going to go in depth on how to tell if you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, what testing might be able to tell you, and what you should do about it. Alright, so how do you know if you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO? I'm going to go over a couple of the signs and symptoms. Now you already heard me talk about gas, bloating, diarrhea, and constipation. Now those are the standard status quo symptoms and red flags for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But I wanna to add to that list right now. So we're gonna add things like fructose malabsorption, vitamin and nutrient malabsorption. Okay, if you're somebody who eats a lot of fruit and vegetables and you can't tolerate it, it just makes you feel pretty disgusting, you get a lot of gas, diarrhea, constipation from those types of foods, you're a big candidate for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, if you've been diagnosed with IBS, IBS is highly correlated with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But interestingly enough, it can also cause a lot of symptoms in the head. So you may have experienced some anxiety, some depression, okay? You might even have experienced some brain fog and things like that. And those are also red flags for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. With a lot of our clients, they've done a lot of work in the realm of diet. So maybe they switched to paleo. Maybe they switched to hardcore specific carbohydrate diet. They've done a lot of things to try to get better and they're still stuck. They're still having a lot of those GI symptoms we've been talking about. If that's you, if you've done a lot of those things, you could be a very good candidate for somebody who has SIBO. So what I'm going to do next is talk to you a little about testing because it's pretty complex and there's a lot of stuff that you need to know about how to test for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Alright, so when I first learned about testing for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth years ago, I thought maybe I had to have an MD just to understand what the heck we were trying to do here. But I'm going to try to keep it a little simple and talk to you about what we've been doing with our clients so you can get an understanding of how to test for SIBO so that you can do this and talk about this with your doctor. Now, the gold standard in what most practitioners use is called a breath test. Okay, now, the idea behind the breath test is that there's two gases, hydrogen and methane, that get produced as a byproduct when bacteria eat in the small intestine. Okay, so the idea behind the breath test is that you can drink a specific type of sugar. In the case of a lactulose test, you're drinking lactulose. In the case of a glucose test, you're drinking glucose. And when you drink those sugars, you can actually measure the amount of hydrogen and methane that come out of your breath in the following two to three hours after you consume that. The idea being that in the next two to three hours after you consume that, if the bacteria get it before you absorb it, you're gonna produce a lot of hydrogen and methane and that's gonna be filtered into your blood and then into your lungs and you'll breathe it out. Now the lactulose test tends to be a better option than the glucose test because the glucose test tends to just be very accurate for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that happens in the very beginning of the small intestine. Whereas a lactulose test tends to be more accurate for overgrowth in the entire small intestine. Okay, it gets a little deeper. Now some of you may not understand why you can't test with a stool test for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And that's because generally speaking when we're looking at stool, we're checking for bacterial infections and parasitic infections in the large intestine. So with SIBO we're talking specifically about the small intestine. And that's an important distinction that I had to first learn years ago when I was getting into this. Okay, so in general, the lactulose three-hour breath test is a good option for most practitioners. And I'll show you a test result right now that you can look at and kind of see how the tests look. It's going to show you the hydrogen and methane gases as they came out of your breath in a two to three hour period after you consumed the lactulose sugars. And it's pretty cut and dry whether or not you have abnormal levels of hydrogen and methane gas produced by your small intestine. 
Now next is another interesting test that we're using a lot with our clients, and that's the Metametrics Organic Acids panel. Now interestingly, just like the hydrogen and methane gases are produced when the bacteria consume food that's supposed to be for us, not for them, they also produce organic acids. So byproducts in the body are called organic acids, and pretty much a lot of the body processes produce organic acids on a regular basis. What's interesting about this organic acids panel is you can order it and it's a simple urine panel. Okay, it's a morning urine sample and it's gonna look for organic acids byproducts that are only produced by bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine. Okay, similar to the hydrogen and methane idea, except for you're gonna be filtering out those organic acids and passing them in your morning urine. Now you can get the 0097 for Metametrics and that's just going to be the panel that looks for gut dysbiosis or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Or you can get the 0091, which is the comprehensive panel, okay? Now I'm going to put up a screenshot here of a sample 0097 organic acids profile so you can see it's pretty cut and dry. If you have some of these organic acids outside of normal levels, you generally speaking have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Okay, so you can take either of these tests, the lactulose breath test or the Metametrics 0097 organic acids profile to your practitioner or you can come work with us and we can do it with you to try to understand whether or not you actually test positive for this. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about what you should do if you do have a positive test because it really dictates how you're gonna make some changes in your diet and lifestyle over the next six to 12 months. Now, the whole idea behind the specific carbohydrate diet is to eat monosaccharides or single sugars and starve out the bacteria in your gut, right? And generally speaking, if you have a positive test for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you need to make a change in your diet. So you're gonna to wanna to eliminate a lot of the sugars, definitely no table sugars, definitely no grains. You wanna limit the fruit a little bit, limit the veggies if you can, and focus on trying to starve it out to some degree. But for the most part, it can take years to try to starve it out just on diet alone, if you can do it successfully. There's been some recent research that would suggest that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can actually feed on protein. You can actually feed on the brush border enzymes that your body's naturally producing, all to stay alive. So generally speaking, just eliminating fruit or going on a super low carb diet may or may not actually do the job for you. Now a lot of doctors out there, they'll throw a ton of antibiotics at you. It'll be like a gut bomb cocktail. There's different protocols that a lot of people use. And our dear friend, Dr. C. Becker of SIBOinfo.com, she's an expert in this area. We've interviewed her many times. And if you go to her site, you can actually see some of the antibiotic protocols that work well with SIBO. Now what I'll tell you, if you're one of those people like me who doesn't really like to use antibiotics because it can be a kind of nuclear bomb to the gut bacteria that you're trying to preserve if you can, there are herbal protocols that do work. And if you work with us, we could try one of our herbal protocols with you and see if it works. Generally speaking, we do them for about 60 days, okay? And when you're looking at things from a functional point of view, there's two-pronged approach to killing small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. One is obviously you need to have powerful antimicrobial herbs, so things that kill bacteria. But the secret sauce behind a good herbal protocol is to use biofilm busters. So what's a biofilm? Well, a biofilm is a protective layer that bacteria create to keep themselves safe. Plaque on your teeth is an example of a biofilm that bacteria in your mouth create, interestingly. So if you can imagine some level of plaque that these bacteria create in your small intestine, you've gotta go in and break that stuff up before you can even come in and kill it. So a good herbal protocol, or a good natural approach to killing small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is gonna be about 30 to 60 days, maybe even longer. It's gonna come in with a biofilm buster and it's gonna break that stuff up, break that plaque up that's going on that they've built to protect themselves. And then it's gonna come in with some good antimicrobials and do a lot of killing. And the most important part of this whole process is to wait about 30 days after any protocol, whether it's antibiotics or whether it is an herbal approach, and retest. Retest and see if you actually got rid of it. Now, that's the initial approach on how to get rid of it. And obviously we talked a little bit about diet tweaks. If you finally get rid of your small intestinal bacterial growth, you can reintroduce things like safe starches, sweet potatoes, yams, things like that, okay? Because there's a lot of research out there that suggests that eating things like safe starches are gonna be important for your long-term gut health, the gut microbiome in your large intestine and what that needs to do. However, if you got SIBO, those things could actually put you on your knees with some severe GI discomfort. So the most important takeaway from this is three piece, okay? 
Item number one, if you have the signs and symptoms of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, then you need to work with your practitioner to make sure you get a really good lactulose breath test or an organic acids profile to see if you do have it or not. Step two is to make some substantial diet changes. You need to remove all the safe starches, table sugars, grains, that type of thing. Anything that's really gonna feed the bacteria and focus on just eating meats, some fruits, some veggies, and some healthy fats. Okay, so that's step two. And step three is to come in with either an antibiotic protocol or an herbal protocol with a skilled practitioner who's dealt with this stuff before and try to kill that stuff off, okay? And don't forget to retest. That's a really important add-on to that. So, this has been SC Lifestyle TV where each week we give you one simple actionable step. And today, we talked about bacteria growing where it shouldn't be in your small intestine. We'll see you again soon. I almost forgot. Share the love, share the love. I'm going to reveal my small intestinal bacterial overgrowth super secret herbal protocol nuclear bomb of destiny. How's that for marketing for you? Those of you that know my story intimately understand that me and SIBO, we've had some fights over the years, but I won. I didn't give up and I beat that little bugger. For years I thought I had fructose malabsorption, but it turns out I just had SIBO. And once I treated the SIBO, I can eat fructose again, yay! This is really important because it's in most, a lot of things that we eat. Bacteria in the small intestine are like when your mother-in-law comes over and she stays in the spare bedroom and she's just there for way too long and the house is really crowded and the kids are going crazy and you're just like, ah! If you don't have in-laws, maybe you can't relate to that. <laughs>